Well, disgraced movie mogul Harvey Weinstein is scheduled to be arraigned in court on Wednesday on new sex crime charges. Back in April, New York's top court overturned his 2020 rape and sexual assault conviction. That set the stage for a retrial in November, but it is not clear if the new charges, which will remain sealed until Wednesday, will be included in that trial. Weinstein insists any sexual encounters he engaged in were consensual. Here with us now, trial attorney and legal analyst, Misty Maris. Good morning, Misty. Great to see you today. Good morning, Anna. Thanks for having me. So I'm just reading that the DA has said Weinstein is being charged with these new additional crimes dating back to 2000 and that at least three new accusers are prepared to testify. Why were these cases not brought, brought up previously? That's going to be the question, and that's actually going to be central to the defense. So the question is, why now? Why not charge these cases before when Harvey Weinstein faced the initial criminal uh, trial and criminal allegations? And the defense is going to say that these new allegations are coming at a time when the appellate court had overturned the previous verdict because of what's called propensity witnesses. Propensity witnesses relate to uncharged allegations that show a pattern or practice by the defendant. That's how they come into the courtroom. And so because these propensity witness te witnesses testified, the appellate court said, that was too much, that went too far, that violated Harvey Weinstein's rights, overturned the verdict. Now we see these new, char these new charges coming down the pike and defense attorneys are going to attack that and say, this is a way to, this, this is prosecutors trying to circumvent that ruling by charging conduct that they already knew about. So we don't exactly know why until we see the actual criminal charges in the indictment on Wednesday. Yeah, well, he really hasn't looked, he hasn't looked well. Um, I remember reading mm -hmm. that he'd gone to the hospital, but Weinstein, he's 72 years old and actually just underwent emergency heart surgery recently. He's been sentenced to 16 years in prison for sexual abuse in California after his New York retrial, which um, he awaits in jail. What is the best outcome that he can hope for? Well, he could hope for an acquittal, right? Because the evidence is going to be different. Remember that it is anew. So this new trial, the evidence, we, we can forecast what's going to come into the courtroom, but it's going to be a new trial, a new jury, new evidentiary rulings. So that's his best outcome. Will that happen? We don't know. Right now, the fight is about whether these new charges are consolidated. That means whether or not the new charges will be a part of the trial of the, the retrial of the old charges. So prosecutors wanna consolidate everything in New York. They want everything to be heard by a jury at the same time. That inures to their benefit, of course, because when a jury hears from you know six witnesses as opposed to three, it's going to help the prosecutors prove their case. Right. The defense, however, says these new charges should be a totally separate trial. So that's the threshold issue. But with this health condition, Anna, I could see this being on a significant delay because any defendant has a right to face their accusers. So he's going to have to be physically able to be in that courtroom. Huh in order for the trial to move forward. Okay. Yeah, I mean, even just with us talking about it today and it being back in the papers and the headlines and everything, it's sort of ripping off the scab for sexual assault victims of all sorts Absolutely. and stripes ar around the world, really. What kind of challenges is Weinstein's legal team up against? Will his role in setting off the Me Too movement prevent him from getting a fair trial? That would always be a concern, I would imagine. Anna, you're, you're absolutely right. And it's always a question when you have a high profile defendant and somebody who is known as being a, a, an abuse, a, a sexual abuser. He is convicted in California. His New York verdict was overturned, but in California, the conviction as of now stands. And so seating a jury who is going to be able to come into that courtroom and without a bias, right? They're going to have to base their determination on the evidence in the courtroom and not anything else that they've heard over the course of the years and years and years of allegations and information that has come out about Weinstein. So jury selection is a laborious process in any high profile case, and especially in this one, and especially when you're talking about a retrial, because there's a lot of information out there. That being said, Jurors take their responsibility very seriously. And there's a whole slew of strategies. Uh, there's 
there's court, uh, the, the judge will implore uh, surveys and all sorts of things that help seat a jury who can come in, even if they know about the case, come in unbiased, make that determination based on the evidence, not what they know from the media. Yeah, I can't imagine there is a person in the United States who hasn't heard of, of this guy. Not possible. Uh, yeah, not but possible. you just have to <laughs> find people that can, can put their ideals aside. Misty Maris, thank you so much. Thank you, Anna. Great breakdown.